Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Grand Boulevard Coalition. The Grand Boulevard Coalition is a drug-free communities program sponsored by SAMHSA. And um, before we get started, again, I should say welcome. And before we get started, let me uh, send my sincere um, condolences to um, the family of um, the three youth um, that we've lost in the city of Chicago over this past week. Um, so I, I sincerely, uh, my heartfelt condolences go out to them. But we have a very exciting show, um, this drug-free community. Um, this is a live, interactive show, so join us in the conversation at 312-738-1060. 312-738-1060. I am your host, Bamani Obadelli. I am the uh, chairman of the board of the Grand Boulevard Coalition. The Grand Boulevard Coalition is made up of community stakeholders, and partners in the Grand Boulevard community. Um, our goal and focus is to decrease the um, underage, to, in, to decrease underage drinking and drugging among youth in the Grand Boulevard community. Um, and let me just tell you a few, a few of our partners, tell you about a few of our partners. Um, we have Recovery 2000, uh, Miss Isetta Walton, which is a um, recovery and drug-free and HIV AIDS organization operating out of the Grand Boulevard community. We have the Institute for Positive Living, Reverend Maurice Coverson, which is an educational and literacy program um, in the community, working with several schools. Um, we have Ms. Krista Hamilton, who is the, um, the executive director of Centers for New Horizon, which is a community-based organization who provide a, a, uh, a plethora of social uh, services in the Grand Boulevard community. Uh, the Green Light Movement, which is an entrepreneurship program. Um, our business sector partner is Mr. John Cook of the Bronzeville Community Clubhouse. Um, we also have a CPS representative now, uh, Mr. Kareem Pender, is our new CPS um, liaison. Um, and we also have a religious liaison or church sector partner, a religious sector partner in Greater Harvest Missionary Baptist Church, um, Pastor Eric Thomas. And last but not least, our civic uh, partner in collaboration that makes all of this happen is the Third Ward Alderman, Alderman Pat dial. Um, and so I want to thank you guys for watching again. This is a live show, 312-738-1060. And tonight, we have a very dynamic um, and exciting guest, a young man who I've known for quite a while, um, a longtime Grand Boulevard slash Bronzeville resident. Um, this young brother is a, a small business owner. He's an author. Um, he's a motivational speaker um, and a youth advocate amongst Anything. I think that's the most important thing that he really advocates for young people. And since I've known him, he's done it. Uh, my brother, Lee Allen Jones. Thanks for having me. Hey, Lee Allen, how's it going, man? Hey, it's wonderful to be here at hey, the man. lovely Can TV studios. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, this this is your first time in this. Studio. Yes, this is a it's a great place. It looks much uh, much more in tune than it was on Green Street. Like a great investment has been made. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I almost when I saw it, man, I said, wow. It's like going to the CNN building. Yes, it yeah. is. They've made a great investment here. A nice green room, too. All right. Well, we won't uh, belabor um, talking about the great attributes of this great station at Can TV. Uh, Leon, let's just dive right into it, man. Um, let, let's talk about the state of, 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 of youth and our young people. I mean, I started off talking about the violence that's plagued our community. But um, from your perspective, a person who's worked with young people, a person who's, who's been involved in the community for a long time, how much thing? How much has things changed over the over the years as 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 you've been been doing the work that you've been doing in our community as it relates to talking to young people, working with young people? What do you see um, as the biggest challenge for young people today? I think when we look at uh, youth development contemporarily, there are so many different dynamics that exist within that now. I mean, being in a technologically driven world, a social media driven world, there wasn't a social media when you were growing up. There right. definitely wasn't social media when I was growing up. So when you look at those dynamics and then you take into account that every kid has a cell phone, uh, every kid has a medium by which to communicate alternatively from the mainstream, that's created an entirely different paradigm uh, in youth development that I don't think any generation has ever faced, uh, you know, relative to the United States or the world. Yeah. And being able to connect instantly to media and sharing information uh, and knowing that that information is being shared by developing minds, it, it, it's, created, it's created a great deal of liberation, but it's also created uh, new, new things that have to be taken into account while you're working and developing young people. 
Okay. And so, um, Leanna, how how important do you feel that, how, how important do you see community collaborations as it relates to trying to navigate um, this genre of social media and interaction and prevention as it relates to young people? I think it's substantially behind. I mean, okay. I, you got to look at it. You know, back in the day, it was that, you know, 11-year-old could program a VCR and an adult couldn't. You know yeah. what I mean? And so now that's moved on in terms of the technology where the youth are embracing technology at a far faster pace than the institutions that are meant to kind of develop their skill set. So, you know, back in the day, you needed an entire plethora of encyclopedias in your house. Yeah. Today, you can do all of that on Google. So in some regards, these institutions are antiquated in dealing with the evolution of what adolescence really means. Stay there for a moment. Um, and, and you're so right, man. You just brought back memories. Like, I still have, like, in my basement, that chest with all those psychopedias in it. And, and I'll tell you this also. My daughter, uh, he taught me, and I mean, I'm 44. I mean, I'm not ashamed to say that. But my daughter, teenage daughter, taught me how to um, navigate through uh, um, social media. I, I, one of my, I don't, I, you know, and so um, I did not have um, any social media website or page um, prior to eight years ago. Right, so I just didn't believe. That's right it. about the same time that I got one. Well, I yeah, but but, but they, but but it's been around for the last. Well, actively and engaged. About the last 12 you know, years. 12 you years, think? right. Yeah, you, you started off with this MySpace. But my, my point is, I knew nothing about it. And it's even today very difficult to, um, in some aspects, to, like, they have all this, they, they've evolved. So it's, it's moved from Snapchat now. and, and FaceTime. And all FaceTime and all, interface, you know, yeah. so no... Well, anyway, we'll get back to that. But the point of the matter is that you write about the encyclopedias. And, man, I still got um, uh, this chest down in my basement that, you know, obviously it's obsolete. Because my, my, my son... They, oh, yeah, they Google Drive. And, in fact, my son had to do some history document uh, uh, a report for his school. And it, it required that you had to have a Mac PC uh, with a camera on it. Right. For him to to do this presentation, and and he had to do it from that. I mean, so anyway, you're right about technology, right? And 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 but now the most serious thing that I don't want anybody to miss, you talked about the community agencies and them missing the bucket. They missed the bucket. To, I think okay, that yeah. they were they're probably decades behind. Okay, and saying that you just look at it this way: if we looked at the cell phone revolution that happened over the last decade, where yeah. It was like nobody had cell phones, so now everybody having them. Can you imagine using that technology and fostering community with that technology uh -huh. as opposed to allow, uh, now having that technology creating chaos in the community? Because now, be through Facebook Live and live streaming, you can, in essence, see juvenile delinquency in prime time. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and so when you take that into consideration, so the work that we did in 93, doing, those, doing the radio documentaries, Ghetto Life 101, right. and then Remorse, the 14 stories of Eric Morris, we needed an institution to support us to broadcast what was going on in our community. Today, you can have anybody broadcast that that has a smartphone and has a Facebook app and wants to do Facebook Live. And so when we're looking at this crime that is happening, it's really juvenile delinquency that's been given technology. Interesting, you say that, and that that, i.e., young people, Facebook in live, them committing criminal acts or engaging in nefarious behavior with not. I, do you think they're oblivious to the fact that they're doing I think this? They are. I, mean, I, 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 think, I, I, I think what has happened is that yeah. we live in a culture where media has become capital. Okay. So even though they may be poor, even though they may be disenfranchised, the ability to access media has become capital. So the more that you see media, the more they're taking it in as capital because they're getting social status from using social media in ways that they couldn't before. You could be the toughest guy in your neighborhood, but there was no way to broadcast that previously. Now, that's why you see so much engagement in terms of the violence, which yeah. really should have abated 
looking at the level of public policy that we have had engaged in this situation, but nobody has taken into account the technology. You've never had as much money dedicated to youth programming and servicing as you have now, even with the budget cuts. Interesting. Interesting. So it, 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 am I hearing you say that, that you don't believe that there's a lack of service, I mean, lack of resources? that are coming into these communities to deal with this? I don't think there's a lack of resources taken okay. in instance right. like today before I knew we were coming on. I mentioned to you about the Job Corps training center that you have, the Paul Simon Job Corps Center. Yeah. It only has an 82% utilization rate. An 82% utilization rate for a federally funded program that works with youth about developing employment skills and jobs that, 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 that can be developed from what they do at an 82% utilization rate. Okay, but then you say, well, how many African Americans are participating in that as based on Latino? So when we look at programming, yeah. we, we're, we're, we're not taking into account that adolescents and youth development have evolved. Okay, got it. We, we, we got a caller. Um, I'll hold my point after the caller. Caller, you on the air. Uh, yes, and good afternoon. Good evening, sir. And I have seen your show quite some time. Uh huh. But let me tell you something right now. This is the best guest that you have had yet. He's telling you the reason, and people don't truly understand it. And that, you're a smart guy, man. You're a very smart guy. Ty Tech is the reason why it's so damn crazy out here. Let me give you a prime example. You remember the big old computers? They used to say kids stayed on that computer so much they wasn't able to even write their name. Well, now, like he said, technology has gone way beyond that now. Like he's, they got people that work three shifts on the job, uh, the city, on the police department, three shifts, and that's their job to look at all of this social media, social media, all this Facebook. Kids now these days do not care if somebody know anything. They, they, they don't care. The, they think that the world is theirs right now, and it really is true because, see, a lot of people in the house do not look at social media. They don't know what their kids are doing, but, again, they are very smart now. They don't care, and what's so sad about it? Next year is gonna be something else, a little bit different, a little bit smarter. Yeah, well, well, I, 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 I hope you, you, you're wrong to that, that extent, uh, caller. But hey, listen, man, I appreciate um, uh, you call again, man. You always are uh, on point, and um, hey, Lee Allen, uh, thank kudos you. Kudos to you. Yeah, right. Uh, we got another caller. Um, caller, you on the air? Hi, my name is Miss Bailey. How are you? Miss Bailey, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. I would first like to thank you both for the positive work that you're doing in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Second of all, I would like to say that I had a 23-year-old son that was killed uh, in 2013 mm -hmm. um, over East, and the cases are solved naturally. And there's a lot of contributors to the violence today and the drugs. Um, first of all, the social media hosts that, you know, the social media people that host these sites, they need to be held accountable for the negative items that are put on that account. Because if you would go into them and look at these kids' accounts, you see sex, drugs, and, you know, and weapons. That's, that's about all you see. And that's where most of your beefs come from. Yeah. You know, and nobody's being held accountable. The officials, the killers, there's just no accountability. accountability. So the kids are really doing what they want to do. And I totally agree with all of your comments. Thank you so much. No, no, and, and thank you. It, it, you know, and to her point, Lee Allen, and I'm going to go back go back because um, I wanted to ask you about Ghetto 101. Um, but but I, I just want to add something to what the young lady just talked about. It's, it, and it's just hard for me to understand, Lee Allen, how does a person get on social media with a blunt in their mouth, smoking, with guns. I mean, I, what she said, with guns. But like I with told, guns. You have to look at it. At media, you got to look at the society that we live in. Okay. They're seeing the same thing. You got to think. In essence, social media created the last two presidencies. The, the last two presidencies were dictated and determined by social media. Okay. And so this is what I had to look at because I was a guardian. I was a guardian in 22, 23. Yeah. So I had to watch how social media was. 
in school, a teacher could monitor a certain activity. The way that the school is traditionally set up, yeah. you could monitor and, and redress certain activity because it was visible to the eye. Right. You could hear about things in the neighborhood that may have happened before the school, you know, so it doesn't affect the school. They're letting the kid out. This stuff is moving faster than the institution's capability to deal with it. Yeah. You, you make a great point. And so that but that goes to the fact of why it's be, why we're so much there's so much friction in our communities is that we have. A younger society, you have younger parents that are being informed in unregulated fashions. And so when you look at why would somebody go on social media smoking a blunt? Why would somebody go in there having sex? It's because they're only mimicking the attitudes of what they're seeing in larger media. So do you feel, as the young lady just said, do you think that Zuckerberg, um, because he basically has a monopoly now, he owns the, the most popular ones, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat, um, do you think he should be held accountable? Or, the, the, the funny thing about this is that you can't have any of these forms of communication without federal regulation with the FCC. Okay. The F FCC still regulates all communications because they own the infrastructure or at least the infrastructure to the entities to be able to have their mediums to be able to be accessed to the and, public. And, and so they're in line, a, a bigger concern for me then based upon what you're saying and I you know I I'm, I get that I didn't think about it this way so then that would that would that would that means then that's why there's an increase of uh, the over uh, indulgence of alcohol and marijuana and pill popping among black teens right well, amongst all of them you don't have to necessarily say you got to look at it the largest heroin crisis in America is happening in rural white suburbs yeah. this is what created Trump you're seeing these towns that have had factories. You're looking at uh, uh, Rust Belt America. You're looking at the Bible Belt becoming the heroin belt. And so this is what drove the fervor for Trump is that it's not only affecting African Americans. Essentially, the south side of Chicago is in the south. It's, it's permeated it because you've lost the middle class employment that used to stabilize communities. And yet they're dealing with the social media crisis. If you go to Ohio, if you go to Wisconsin, there are huge heroin epidemics in these communities. That are, And this may be the first time in America where you have, you can't put color on addiction. That's why you're getting all of this compassion well, I, I, around I, I, drug I, well, abuse. I, 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 I would like to take issue with one thing. See, I always contend that black folks don't have a heroin using problem so much as they have a heroin selling problem. But I want to take a call and we'll come back to it. Caller, you're on the air. You know what, again, I want to thank your host, your guest so much, man. Educate him. Teach him what's going on in this world, man. Ten years ago, would you have ever thought, did everybody seen that where the girl was driving in the car, the baby in the back, the man got killed in the back, the baby got killed? She was streaming this all on her telephone as this was happening. Ten years ago, would you ever would have expected no. that something like that will be no. happening again, man? Just think what the future is going to hold. Let me tell you, FAA ain't going to get into it because this is big business. People make big money for them to sell this options to them so people could use it. People ain't scared no more, man. People ain't scared. That's the problem. Not respect. They not. They not fearful of anything. Once that they see fear, maybe we could have a big hole and try to stop this, what's going on. But until then, man, it's just going to get worse. Thanks for taking the call. Let me get out there so I can hear yep, you. Yep, no problem. Um, and appreciating your call. Listen, you know, I'll be honest with you, caller, and I said this the other night. I, I, I was, I thought the worst thing that I have ever, worst story I ever heard was when Antonio Brown, a nineteen, a nine-year-old child, um, was assassinated over on the southeast side of Chicago, shot maybe ten times, a nine-year-old kid, at point blank. I, I thought that was the worst that I'd seen. And then came the young man who was shot on Seventy-first Street. But a two-year-old child, a twelve-year-old, an eleven-year-old to die in a one-week span in the city of Chicago. It's, it's just heartbreaking. But, Lee Allen, I want to get back to Grand Boulevard and, and, and Bronzeville. And, by the way, let me just tell you guys how you can reach us if you want to reach the Grand Boulevard Coalition. 
Our address is 435 East 35th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. Or you can email us at Grand Boulevard Coalition at gmail.com. Facebook us on Grand Boulevard Coalition 2, and we're also on Instagram. Again, um, you can reach us, Grand Boulevard Coalition, 435 East 35th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. Email us at Grand Boulevard Coalition at gmail.com or Facebook us at Grand Boulevard uh, two inboxes, Facebookers, and then you can reach me. I'm going to say it real slow. 312-420-5582. 312-420-5582. Um, you are watching the Grand Boulevard Coalition. This is a live show. Join us in the conversation at 312-738-1060. I got glasses on and still can't see. 312-738-1060. This is a live show. My guest is Brother Lee Allen Jones. Lee Allen, Ghetto 101. Um, I remember it like yesterday. Just give us a synopsis, and then I, what I want you to do is get a one-on-one and bring it to 2016. 2017? 2017. Oh, well, in, <laughs> 1990, well, in 1993, I had the opportunity with uh, a friend of mine, Lloyd Newman, uh, to do a half-hour radio documentary that aired on National Public Radio. Uh, at that time, we were 13-year-olds uh, living in uh, the Ida B. Wells. Lloyd lived in Ida B. Wells. I lived on Oakwood. We did a 30-minute documentary talking about some of the very same subject matter uh, that we're talking about today, the inequity, the poverty, uh, the disenfranchisement. And we that documentary aired across the world, uh, was globally recognized. We won uh, some of the you know most prestigious radio documentary awards you could win. Uh, that was followed up by Remorse, the 14 Stories of Eric Morris, which is also about the five-year-old that was thrown from the 14-story uh, project window in 1994. Uh, and that parlayed into a book called Our America, which also became a movie uh, that came out on the Showtime network. Uh, and so in 2017, much of the work I do today is very much related to those opportunities doing documentaries then. And, it, and, it, and it's sort of gripping because, you know, we, we could... You know, when Eric Morris was thrown out of the 14-story uh, project window, that was the day, you know, Bill Clinton talked about that. You know, he went on and, you know, talked about that young kid in Chicago. I mean, it was clear as day. And we thought, and you know, we thought that that was one of the most heinous crimes that could have ever been committed yeah. uh, by adolescents. And so in 2017, uh, to take into consider, uh, this consideration the level of crime that we're dealing with and the fact that the former president of the United States you know, has come from the communities, you know, has worked in the very same communities that we talked about in 1993 and the community we talked about in 1994, and to see all of the cosmetic development uh, that we've seen, all of the public policy through Renaissance 2010, uh, the plan for transformation with public housing, and the billions of dollars that have been invested in trying to reduce this problem that we've had. And this is, and let's be, let's be straight up. This is not just a recent phenomenon, what we're dealing with. This probably very much so is a hundred year old problem. Yeah. I mean, you can go to Black Metropolis that was written by Sinclair Drake and Horace Caden and the very same social conditions and the same social factors that, you know, that our ancestors dealt with coming up here from Mississippi and Alabama and all of those southern states, those fundamental problems have not been solved. All right, Lee Allen, we got a minute left to go. Could you quickly, 20 seconds, what is the best solution to dealing with young people today, and how can we help mitigate some of the concerns and issues? I think these institutions that are in, that we've deemed to be in position to deal with young people have to take into consideration that they're behind, and they may never get to catch up because of this technological revolution. And they have to, to now take into account that they're not the primary sources of information. They have to frame a new model of engaging young people because the old traditional industrial model of education is, is going to continue to leave our communities behind because nobody's, no other community is educating their kids in the institutional fashion that we're doing in the African-American community. And so if we don't want to change the institutional frameworks, then we're not going to change the social yeah. frameworks. Well, i got to put a button in it, uh, Lee Allen. Before we go, I want to give a special shout-out and thank you to uh, Prospective Charter Schools. We had a great youth talk on yesterday. Uh, Perry, Rasad, Walton. Uh, also, happy belated birthday, Perry Walton. He's our phone tech the young man in the studio, and he, he did a great job at Perspectives um, High School yesterday with our young people doing a preventative workshop with our parent advocate, Mr. William Penn. Um, between now and next week, it's been a great show. Be safe. God bless.